Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to Doctor Who, this time on Season 12, Episode 9, titled, titled Ascension of the Cybermen, and as far as I'm aware, this is the season finale, I think. I think that's, that's what I've been seeing on Twitter, like the, um, the BBC page promoting this week's episode, they're saying that this is the season finale, so... Yeah, what well, this this feels like it's gone by way too quickly. Like, I mean, for one thing, um, I remember when Doctor Who used to have a lot more, like a, a good few, a good handful more of episodes. Like, this is episode nine. I remember when it used to go up to like thirteen or fifteen or something. Like, let me see. Like, yeah, this this. I mean, well, I mean, there, there, there's apparently an episode ten scheduled for the first of March, which is that's next week that's this this literally next week so i don't know if there's a some kind of surprise episode or whatnot but apparently there's that um but yeah like if we go back to like season five yeah that had like the that had that had yeah that had like 13 episodes pretty much so yeah like season four let's say that had 13 episodes yes yeah, so like it's, it's gone down as it's gone along i think even season 10 and 11 had like nine or 10 episodes or like 11 episodes or something um but yeah this one i think it, 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 it's like story-wise it feels like this has just gone by really really quickly um and it i don't know it, it just feels weird that, that, that just feels weird but um but yeah we are here at the ascension of the cybermen Last uh, weekend, we last episode we had, what did we have? We had the haunting of Villa Diodati, the haunting of Villa Villa Diodati, and we uh, had the Doctor and Co going to meet Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, and and her little band of merry peeps, um, which included uh, uh, Mr. Polidori, uh, Lady Claremont, and Percy Bishelli, Mary's husband. Um, and also the other pompous dickbag whose name I can't really remember, um, but the guy who ended up using Claremont as a human shield when the Cyberman came in. Uh, but yeah, we had Cyberman too. We, 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 we had Cyberman too. We had not just no, not not a cyber, not Cyberman, but a Cyberman, and not just any Cyberman, but the lone Cyberman, the lone Cyberman that Jack Harkness warned us about uh, way back when, when the Jadoon popped up as well. Um, and his one message to the Doctor was don't give it what it wants, don't let it have what it wants, and she had no choice but to give it what it wants because it threatened to um it threatened to unleash its cyber army or cyber tech um upon the earth and to tear it apart and destroy it and all that stuff. So she couldn't risk all of that just for just for the Siberium, which is what it was after. And the Siberium was that little kind of silvery, gooey thing that Percy picked up from the river. Um, containing all the knowledge and all the history and future history and information on the Cyberman. So anything anything one might need to in order to resurrect or rebuild a cyber army. So any info on the technology and the history of the Cybermen, anything they might need. Um, so Jack did say that the Cybermen in the future were, uh, were, were a dead and fallen empire that should stay that way. So with the Siberium, the lone Cyberman could go into the future or back into the future um, and actually use it to resurrect them. So yeah, so she did say that she did say the next step was to fix her first move and her first mistake, um, and to prevent um, the cyber army from being reborn. So whether or not we'll actually see a cyber army, or whether or not, whether whether we're, whether we're going to see it being prevented, um, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, so the Siberium was given to the lone side man. He went forward, and the sky and the sun the sun came out again in uh, in in the UK. Um, but yeah, it, it was a nice kind of mix of horror and classic Doctor Who sci-fi, like the horror stuff, like, um, with, like, the, the, the Cyberman's presence there messing with the, messing with that whole area and messing with the house, like, the house being a puzzle, like, it was, um, the house being a puzzle and stuff was, um, was Percy in the basement trying to, you know, protect, well, the, the, the Siberian within Percy trying to protect the house and protect him from being discovered by the Cyberman, uh, but then we saw him kind of appearing as a ghost in some hallways and stuff, um, and him struggling to actually, you know, be seen by the other occupants and be, be being detected by the house, so that was that kind of horror stuff. It had a nice little creep factor too, and especially with Mary Shelley being there as well, like the the original author of, 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 uh, of Frankenstein. Um, and yeah, and I think I think the, looking back, I actually caught one of those Easter eggs about her being the original one, her, 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 her looking at um 
at the Cyberman and being like, you know, oh, are you one man or are you a man of like many different parts? And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet there's still some humanity or human spirit left in you somewhere. So we, we see somewhat of like, we're, 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 like, you know, in, in this particular interpretation and in this particular context, we, we, we see where and how she would get the kind of idea for Frankenstein, a man made of many parts, but still, you know, he still has some kind of humanity on the inside. So that was cool. Um... But yeah, so she has the symbols. I think I think um, Yaz and Graham and Ryan took down the symbols that were written all over Percy's room, like to do with the Siberian. So she they've got that, and the Doctor gave them a chance to be dropped back home so that she could take on the cyber thing herself. But they said no. They 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 stuck with her through and through and said, you know, you're facing this. We're facing it together as a team, as we always have and as we always will. So I'm like seventy percent sure we're gonna lose someone. I'm like seven. I'm seventy percent sure we're gonna lose someone. I mean, we've had these companions for like two seasons now, and I feel like I I hate that I feel like that because I feel like this is the first season where we've seen them properly fleshed out and properly with the Doctor, um, and especially being incorporated into an actual story this time instead of every episode being something random and something new and no like coherent plot to follow. Like this is the first time we're seeing them seeing the like being with the doctor at her darkest and at her lightest and you know in all sorts of situations so i think i i, I really want to avoid um them the like her losing them now for whatever reason but i don't know again i feel like th 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 this is said to be the season finale this just feels way too short for a season it feels way way too short and especially with all the stuff that went down with the timeless child they've gone next to nowhere with that stuff so it just, it just feels wrong to end it all here so I don't know what's happening. If there really is another episode um, coming out next week, or if this is really, it, or, or if they're gonna save more of the timeless child stuff for next season, or what's gonna happen. But I don't know. It it, it just feels weird, and like, and especially story wise, it, it just feels like this stuff has gone by way too quickly. It, it just feels like no time has passed at all. So I honestly just don't know how to feel. Um, well, besides from weird, but um, but yeah. So that is pretty much all I have from the last one we'll, so we'll see how all of the cyber cyber stuff goes down um, in this episode and see how if, if this really is the season finale if, if that's it if that is what they're going for here we'll see exactly how they tie things up and you know I mean I, I not everything's going to be tied up I doubt everything's going to be tied up maybe some hints and teasers of future stuff here and there but yeah I doubt this is going to be the perfect finale um, but yeah that is pretty much all I have uh, in terms of pre-spec, so yeah, uh, watching the live stream of the episode, so I'll see you guys when the episode starts. Now oh, that's a cyber helmet, isn't it? That's cool. Yeah. That's a classic one. That's like a a tenth Doctor Cyberman. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. That's a tenth Doctor Cyberman helmet. Yeah. A baby in a basket, on the in the middle of the road, the bike path even. That can't be normal. <laughs> like even for someone who just leaves their child like in the hands of another person, that can't be normal. Just leaving inside of the road, in the middle of the road. No. Why do I feel like this has a really sad ending? Like even these parents die. Why do I feel like that's the route they're going down? Can't take the commando lifestyle. Well, hey, <laughs> no commando jokes, please. I don't need that image in my head. The doctors customize it to project particles of gold into the air. Gold. Oh yeah, gold. The golden ticket. The golden ticket. A smack to the face. Yeah. I was a teacher. Rabio was a nurse. We got a childminder, a driver, a builder. Not many fighters then. Ordinary humans. Yeah, survivors, but not fighters. Huh. And we've all lost everything. Whoa, wait. Cyber drones. Cyber drones, just the helmets. Just the helmets. Oh, crap. Oh, they're going to take out the defenses. Oh, God. The, oh, these people are all going to die. They're all going to die. Oh. Oh, no. This isn't a discussion. We're not just going to leave you. Yes, you are. You have to, all of you. No questions. Get out. This is classic sacrificial doctor mode. So sacrificial Talk doctor mode. You're human. Whoa. 
Is that the lone Cyberman? Oh, that's him, isn't it? That's the lone one. <laughs> oh, there they are, the classic ones, the older ones. <laughs> oh no, Ryan, 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 Ryan. You shall perish. But you're a liar. Oh, crap, oh, fee cat. Oh, okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah, huh? This is gonna make him cross. Okay, okay that worked. A, a human could do it. Okay. Well, they are in the far future, so they have to deal with some new attack. I was with him the day he found you. Oh, is he that police officer? Look at you now. Huh, okay. Oh, I didn't even clock that. Yeah, that's nice. So he's seeing him all grown up now. Cool. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that family story does not have a happy ending in any way. We won't get there at anything less than 90%. We won't make it at all if you push it past 90. Well, then have it at 90 exactly. The boundary patterns are never the same twice. It's our best hope. Safe harbor. Oh, so you only got one shot at this then. Those are human emotions. The real side He's still half intact. They don't do emotions. Yeah, you're still half intact. Mm-hmm. That's what I call an inner conflict. Mm-hmm. Yes. He wants to be a side man so bad he hates what's oh, pushing him towards that. Oh. Mm-hmm. Am I? Didn't <laughs> And he uses it. Didn't really think that one through, did you, Brendan? I'm fine. I'm fine. Care to explain how? Which way did he go? Come on. Okay, even if it wasn't for the bullet, that drop alone should have killed him. Or seriously maimed him. Well, not even a scratch. No bullet hole, no scratch, nothing. What's out there? Can you see what's making the noises? Yeah. What is it? Oh god, what's this zoom out gonna be? Oh, they're in the middle of a debris field. Cybermen in space! Oh, it's a Cybermen in space! Of Smart, intuitive. Hmm. Especially Graham, like no, like recognizing the docking space of a spaceship. Oh, that's a very bumpy ride. It looks to be a very bumpy ride. Mm. Yeah, not gonna help if you're screaming to conserve the oxygen. Okay, that worked. That worked. With pinpoint precision, that worked. War carrier. A war carrier. Wait, they're carrying Cybermen. They're carrying an army of Cybermen, or even armies of Cybermen. Look. Not even, I didn't get that. Not even, I didn't get that. Mm. <laughs> you are really strange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most normal bloke you're ever going to meet. Strange is a compliment. Uh. I like strange. Huh? Well, I guess strange is her new normal, so. <laughs> That's a Cyberman! That's a Cyberman, isn't it? Oh, that's a newer Cyberman. Jesus Christ. How many levels on this ship? Several hundred. Oh, jeez, that's an armada. That's an armada. That's very, very much an army. The word spread. So, where's everyone else? Dead. There's only me. They all died. I helped everyone else through the boundary. Oh, no, oh, okay, they, I forgot the boundary was a thing. Because they I'm they left through the boundary. Abandoned no longer. Oh, he's going to release them, isn't he? Ascension. Yeah. This is what the rebirth is. He's gonna release all the Cybermen. 
on the Wait, what? The hell kind of ascension is this? Is he killing the Cybermen? Carrying a Cyberman that makes other Cybermen scream. Oh, Jesus. Step closer. It responds to proximity. Oh, so is it like a literal wormhole or something? Like a portal? That's the boundary? How is that possible? So like a wormhole? I don't know. It's the last way out of this galaxy. Whoa. May we all live up to the standards you set us. So he's reached his retirement age. Okay. Damn. That's cool. Please he's li he's lived a life to some sense. Would you mind coming with us to the back office? No, I don't trust this. How are they still how is his dad still alive when he's this age? No, I don't trust this. Nah. Wait, is this some cyber crap? Is that some cyber crap? Is this a conversion? Is this a conversion? We have to get rid of everything, I'm afraid. Thank you for your service. I'm sorry you won't remember it. Wait, what? Okay, though, that, 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 hmm, okay, well, I figured there would never be a happy ending for that one. I figured there wouldn't be a happy ending, but that has to be a conversion. What is that? That's Gallifrey! I've never seen it look like that before. That's Gallifrey! Is that what's, is that what, the, what's on the other side of the boundary? Is that where they've all gone? The master. <laughs> entrance, right? He's back. Be afraid, Doctor, because everything is about to change forever. No. No. Who concludes next Sunday in the oh. time download? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. That makes that makes more sense. I was about to say right. Okay, it's, it's a good thing I googled this season <laughs> beforehand. It's a good thing I googled this season beforehand. I think, I don't know, maybe maybe if I misread that original tweet or what happened, but I remember them saying this this episode is the finale, is the, is the season finale. So maybe this is part one, because I think that's what I heard about the last episode, that the, the last episode was part one of the finale. I mean, maybe it's a three-parter, maybe that one's part one, this is part two, that's part three. That would make more sense, so like a trilogy uh, finale. But yeah, I was, about, I was about to say, that is the messiest finale I've ever seen on this show. That is this, it's single-handedly the, the, the messiest finale I've seen, especially story-wise. That is the mess, the single messiest finale I've ever seen. That is not a finale by any means. <laughs> um, but okay, all right. They had me pretty much for most of the episode, I'm not going to lie, until... Thank you, narrator lady. Thank you for pointing out that it concludes next week. Okay, all right. That makes so much more sense, but yeah. Um, so let me just take that note down quickly. Um, boundary equals Gallifrey. Nice surprise pop up by the master as well. Nice surprise pop up by the master. So yeah, so wait, the boundary turned into Gallifrey because I think it can't have been Gallifrey the entire time because um, Ko Sharmus, that, that old dude, he said it's never done that before. They said it, it's never, he said it's never turned into that before. So you know, that means this is a first. That means that this, that this is the first time Gallifrey's ever shown up, and for whatever reason it's showing up, I think, I, I don't know, I mean, I mean, maybe, well, the boundary, well, it's meant to be a safe passage outside, it, it's safe passage out of the galaxy, so it takes you somewhere, like, to a completely random, so it, it's meant to take you to a random point in, um, it's meant to take you to a random point in the universe, but what if it's not random? What if, uh, if it's meant to be a safe passage, obviously, you know, you know, 
Well, I mean, okay, I, I don't know if, if I'm reading too much into this, but if it's meant to be safe passage, maybe it takes the people where they want to go or where they feel that they would be safe. So, like, to wherever they feel is home or where, wherever that they, they remember is safe. So then, or wherever, wherever they remember is home. So since, since, since the doctor was the one who activated the portal, um, she stepped forward and she, you know, activated the proximity thing. So it showed her the portal at first, that purpley gateway thing, but then it turned into Gallifrey. But... I mean, I'm guessing that there has to, be, especially if the master is popping up. The master popped up at the end. If he's popping up at the end of that, there has to be more to it. There has to be more to it that I'm missing out on. But god damn, god friggin' damn. So the boundary shows her Gallifrey. I think that might. I mean, again, if if he says that's the first time it's happened, there there there, there must be. There has to be more to it than that. So yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just really glad that's not the finale. Because again, messiest finale I've ever seen. That is not any that that is no finale um that i would be happy with like that is not a finale cliffhanger even that i would be happy with that 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 is something that i i'd actually just be levels of like multiple levels of pissed off at if that's what the bbc were pulling but no their season does conclude next week so i think maybe this could be seen as maybe like a part two but mostly as a part one because even though even the last episode it, it, it didn't really seem like a part one to a finale so maybe this is part one and the next one is part two so yeah, that's cool. Um, glad they didn't end it with that. Um, so that was then, and, and the, the master's usual message being like, you know, prepare yourself because everything you know about and everything you believe is about to change and all that stuff. So he's um, still ro ro rocking that purple kind of coat that he had as well. So that was cool. Um, but great to see Satcha back as the master too. Um, was wondering when he'd come back as well. I was wondering w w when he'd actually be back. So that was a nice little pop up. Um, but T.S. I guess we'll we'll, we'll we'll um see more of him and of Gallifrey in the actual finale. Um, what else? So the flashbacks. What were the flashbacks all about? So we had Brendan, who was a lost baby. He was a baby just in a basket, left in the middle of the cycling path and picked up by that dude. Um, and then. The police, the policeman was meant to go find his original parents, and the, the mother said, "We'll look after him until you do." But then, in the end, I think they didn't find them, or they just kind of stopped looking. But eventually, that the, the, that that couple adopted him as their own son, and the the, the 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 mother seemed more more than happy to do so. So it seems like it seems like they'd been waiting for a child anyway. Um, but then he lived a life, and then he grew up, and he became like a a, a police officer. Um, and then yeah, but he wasn't a normal thing. He wasn't a normal guy though. I think that that the the flashbacks were I think I think particularly messy because I think so. Then he gets shot. He survives the gunshot alone. No bullet wound. Like like a bullet hole in his actual uniform, but no bullet scratch or anything on his skin. Like he's just fine. And he survives the fall from the cliff. So, I mean, I feel like if anything, the fall from the cliff would have killed him, like almost instantly. Like or or, or at least it it it, it would have left him on the floor bleeding out if he's landing on that so you know the gunshot definitely didn't kill him. I mean the gunshot didn't seem like it was any, like like that close to his heart but it still would have taken a lot out of him especially if he fell off the the side of the cliff um but he walked away from that without a scratch and then his even even his dad was skeptical like not that I'm not happy you're alive because you know you're my son and all but how are you alive? Like, aren't, 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 like, like, you know, like, defying the very, like, the, the, the baseline laws of human, like, human life right there. Like, you know, falling from that and also take, walking away without a bullet wound from an actual gunshot. Like, you know, I, 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 I wanted to have seen him, you know, interrogating the thief in the police station. Like, yeah, you shot me. That wasn't very nice of you. And it's also a crime to shoot a police officer. So, you know, you're going to be facing some hard justice for that. Um, but there was that, and then he reached a retirement age after that as well, and then, I think what was weird about that one was, he reached a retirement, I think he, he had to be in his, what, like, in his 70s at the very least, he, he went grey, he went grey and he went all wrinkled, but then he walks out of the police station, and the guy who originally recruited him, and his dad, not only are they still alive, but they don't look like they 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 don't look like they've aged a day since the day he first got recruited. They they they, they don't look a day older than that, and they take him back into the police station. They put the little helmet thing on him, and they just you know they 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 they're gonna they're gonna have to wipe everything. So I mean, 
that scene as a whole just screams cyber conversion. Like they're gonna wipe all of his memories, all of his emotions, and make him one of them. But there, there, there was no suit or anything. It was just like a literally like a, like a set of headphones wired up to a machine, and then it was just wiping his memory. So, um, I mean, I figured for that. One, I mean, I figured that that would connect into the, into the the present day thing somehow. Like, like yeah. I mean, it had to be something to do with the Cybermen. Like maybe the Cybermen went further back in time at one point and then decided to you know start their conquest of humanity earlier on and then build their way up over time or something but i figured more than anything there would not be a particularly happy ending for that family at all so yeah that um i feel like that one we the the, the conversion scene is probably not the ending to that we'll probably see how that ties into this properly because i mean all we know is that they likely converted him but we we, we we don't know if he's one of the cyber troops or if he's you know someone else i mean i was wondering maybe could the dad be the lone cyberman because the, the lone cyberman like, like we, we see that his face is still intact inside the thing half the helmet is torn off um, so we see he has scars and stuff, but half his face is still intact. So I was wondering, like, could could his dad be the lone Cyberman, or could it be Brendan? Could Brendan have like been chosen for that? Well, no, no, because the lone Cyberman, I, the lone Cyberman said when his time came, he offered himself up willfully. He actually, you know, gave himself up. Actually, you know, happy to serve at the at the the might of the Cyber Empire and whatever. Um, but he was initially rejected and then he said that, you know, that upset him at first, but then he realized that he was chosen to retrieve the Siberium and to re, re to revive the cyber empire and the cyber army and all that stuff. So he had, that has to be a completely different one. I think he had a name as well. I think, let me go back. He had like another name at some point. Yeah. He had, um, Ashad. Yeah, that was his name, Ashad. So he, he can't be because that's Brendan. I don't know what his dad's name. I think his dad's name is Pat. I think like Pat, like Patrick or something. But yeah, I remember that. Um, but yeah, so he has to be. I think maybe he could be a descendant of Brendan. Like maybe his son or his grandson or something. But I mean, he's lived long enough to do that. And I think. I think Brendan. I think he's he has to be from way earlier. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I, 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 I don't even have the mental energy to summon a guess as to what year he's from or what time period he's from i think his police officer uniform looks fairly fairly old so maybe the maybe just after the days of the when were they what were they called originally the peelers or the the i don't, I don't know i don't know were they ever called peelers I mean, let me let me look that up i think i read that somewhere can't exactly remember where yeah the peelers police yeah the the, 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 the those were the, the the first police um the first police officers in Ireland, yeah, and then they moved into England, yeah, after Sir Robert Peel who introduced them, okay, yeah, so they were called Peelers at some point, um, but I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was that one, but <clears throat> it was, I think, what was that, when was that, in 1829, oh, 1829, that was when they first um, came about, so, okay, um, cool little history tidbit right there. Um, but yeah, I think we, we, we've yet to see more of, um, Brendan's thing there and where, where that leads, but we know that he was, um, found in the middle of the road. He's impervious to great height falls and gunshots. He's, he's impervious, right? Well, I think immune, let's just say immune to that stuff. Like he can literally walk away from that without so much as a scratch. Um, so there's that so that stuff is there so we'll, we'll, i guess we'll, we'll see more of what brendan is like and we'll, we'll, what cyber brendan is like in the future <laughs> next week's episode um but yeah so the lone side man said uh, ashad said um that the siberium showed him more than just the rise of the cybermen there was more he saw in the siberium than just the rise and the, the ascension of the cybermen but also the end of all other life and that's what that's what he seems to be all about right now like you know so so far so far their their main like their their, their primary goal of taking down humanity has has succeeded to a to a point where they've reduced humanity down to the last few members of that of that race great now i've got fucking hiccups one eternity later so their primary goal was to wipe out humanity as much as possible or at least down to you know the last atom or last person or whatever and they succeeded that to a, they, they succeeded in that plan to a point where the, the, the they actually did manage to reduce it to his last kind of few 
members here and there. Um, <clears throat> but their overall goal is actually, you know, the end of all life. So pretty much a universal genocide, like, like just a full on Thanos, like double Thanos, pretty much just like, you know, wiping out all other life in the universe and make sure that the Cybermen are the, the, I mean, and make sure that the Cybermen are the only ones left. But and that sounds eerily similar to what the Daleks always want, like nothing but Daleks throughout the universe. Um, so now like the Cybermen have kind of upped their game. Um, and I think it's it's nice as well to see the older Cybermen models. Like we have we had the new ones we first saw um, we, we, we 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 saw coming in, um, like the, the 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 newer kind of more the sleeker more streamlined models. But then I think in the intro we saw that the, the helmet we saw was like um, back when David Tennant was the Doctor. We saw the Cybermen coming in on 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 his era. Like like the, those were still there. And even even the two Cybermen following um, Ash had around. Those were um, all, all older Cybermen models too. So they 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 they, they, they I mean. As much as they believe in upgrades, I think they, 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 they still believe in keeping the best of all generations and all eras around. So I don't, I don't know if in, the, if in the next one we're going to end up seeing like um, Mondasian Cybermen and all other kinds of Cybermen um, in the finale. But yeah, Universal Genocide, that is their end game. That is their end goal. So exactly how well does they succeed with said plan? We'll just have to wait and see until in, in the finale. But yeah, I think this this definitely feels like a part one. This definitely feels like a part one to this finale. Um, so I'm curious to see how all of this stuff goes down. But the the, the stakes were high. The the stakes and tension with this fight, especially towards the end, especially towards the end with um with with Yaz and Graham and everyone be being trapped on that on that carrier ship by the Simon. The Simon even breaking through like it, they showed them breaking through that door and firing their guns. I think I think they showed them firing their guns. I I saw the light flares going off. So. They showed them firing their guns off, um, so we'll just have to wait and see exactly how how well he has and Graham survive that one. I'm, I'm sincerely hoping so. I'm sincerely hoping they survive, and I do not, I do not want to have to lose anyone in this season. Please, we finally get like a like a like a, like a higher up season from what we had last. I mean, last season I will I enjoyed it, but this one is miles better because we actually have something to follow and it's actually something interesting to watch. So I, I don't want to have to, you know, deal with emotional trauma at the end of this season as well. I do not want to have to deal with that. So, yeah, please don't take them away from me. Please, it's just at least one more season with these companions and actually, you know, like have them don't have them die or anything. It's just just have them go. I mean, I don't. I mean, I I I I haven't heard like any word as to whether or not these companions are actually confirmed for the next season after this one. But I've heard that um Chris Chibnall and Jody are both confirmed. Jody, I'm I I I I, I, I want us to, to stay along for a, to, to stay to stick around for a good enough amount of time, um, before they recast her. But the companions, I don't know. I I, I feel like we, we we might lose one or two, one or two at the end of this season. But I'm too scared as to hazard a guess as to who or you know even even think about that kind of stuff. But yeah, if it, it feels like next season and next episode especially it being the, it being the finale, um, the conclusion to all of this, I feel like it's gonna be a high, it's gonna be an even more high stakes kind of episode. Um, but with this one, I think they, 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 I think with this one, it just showed Yaz and Graham actually, you know, going like to taking those extra steps and, you know, being slightly more optimistic and hopeful and actually, you know, like, like obviously considering like the risks, but also just being like, you know, it's like, especially, especially when they're on that ship, just being like, you know, well, it's better to actually take the chance to actually explore what's on there instead of just waiting to die out here in the middle of a, in, in the middle of a ruined battlefield. So they're kind of especially and Yaz especially just kind of always always taking the the the, the more hopeful route and actually trying to see the best in the situations and just trying to convince herself and actually tell herself that you know that, that they can get out of this and she can get out of this and stuff so benefit of being with a doctor you might die but you'll die hopeful so yeah but please don't kill her off or or, or Graham or Ryan or anyone but <clears throat> but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see exactly how that stuff goes um but they did travel into the far, far future, into pretty much the aftermath of the Cyber War. So it wasn't. I mean, it, I mean, it, I mean, if it's the aftermath of the Cyber War, I, 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 I would, you, you, you'd, you'd think that you know, like, the, like aftermath of the Cyber War, that means that they would have had the time to actually raise the Cyber Army, but not the entire Empire. So this is the one where the Empire that they envision would probably be the one that rules over the entire universe, and there are no other people left. Or anything, or like no other like non-upgradable people left. I mean, if they find people worth upgrading, then you know the, 
the, the, the, the, they, might, they might keep them around and then just start and just convert them and rebuild their army that way as well, like just increasing their ranks. Um, but for the most part, they do just want to take over the universe and have it be a cyber universe and whatever. So just one galaxy at a time, just one galaxy at a time. They they they, they just take over everything. So it would be one hell of a conquest. It would be one hell of a conquest. So. Yeah, um, but yeah, so the aftermath of the cyber war, so they, I think they, 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 they actually had Rose, like, like, resurrected enough of an army for them to be able to take on humanity, to take on the Earth, um, and then drive out humanity to its last few ranks, um, and th there were seven humans left, and those seven humans weren't even fighters, I think one of them was a teacher, one of them was a builder, the other one was something else, like, none of them were actual fighters, and, like, none of them were actual soldiers, or people who fought on the front lines, they were just people who learned to run and to survive and to kind of hide away from the Cybermen and try, try and try, try like just trying as hard as they could to try and see another day one day after the other so the stakes were especially high for them and they but by the time the doctor and the companions came around um and stuff was being set up to repel the Cybermen they lost even more people so yeah um that's that and I think with Asher there was an interesting piece of development in the sense that, you know, like, um, especially him even being upset that he would, I think, you know, his, his, his eternal, his, his internal conflict is, um, you know, him like wanting to drive out whatever humanity is left inside him so that he can become the Cyberman. Cause he was, he said he was initially rejected, but then he kind of came to peace with that because he knew that, you know, he was meant to be the chosen one meant to retrieve the Siberium and revive everything. But, you know, the fact that he was, I think, um, I don't, I don't remember why he said he was rejected, but I think just the fact that that happened, um, you know, like, like people, you know, the people are rejected. I think, why would a Cyberman reject a human? I mean, if, if there's maybe if there's like too much humanity in them or too much emotion, like too much for them to remove, or maybe if it's like, if it's overpowering or something, but you know, I mean, and again, like the, the, the doctor saying like, you know, it's ironic that he wants to wipe out all of humanity, you know, especially considering that, you know, he used to be one of them and then maybe like, like like a reminder of that is like his face still being intact, his face still being under there and like half the thing revealing so there's like it's half and half, like, you know, half of him is a side man, half of him is there's still some sense of humanity, but like like the like he's he's fighting so hard to actually remove what's left of it that he wants to be that perfect side man. Um so he's doing all of this, he's trying, he's, he's fighting as hard as he can to actually, you know, label other humans as weak or maybe just worthy. I mean, the the one exception was the, the baby in the last episode, William, I think his name was, like him saying, you know, oh, you, you, you'll be perfect for an upgrade and everything. So, you know, it's like an interesting piece of development with him. But I think what shocked me most was the amount of Cybermen in this episode. Like, there was a fully fledged army. Like, regardless of the models, there was a fully-fledged army of Cybermen on that ship. Like, there's, like, like, 139 levels and, like, thousands of little pods of Cybermen waiting to be opened. Like, just, uh, like, a full-on army. Like, like one... Definitely, you know, I'd, I'd say definitely enough to take on a whole planet. And then, you know, as they go along, they, 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 as they go along, I think, you know, um, even co... Um, co fuck, the old guy, I can't remember, co Sharbo or co Sharbus. Well, something like the old guy at the end, um, he even said that he used to fight on the front lines, but then he was sent to like a camp or something and getting processed and ready for conversion. So as they go along, even from Ashad's original army, as they went along, they killed off all of the, the, the rejects, pretty much the ones that they found unfit for conversion or the ones who resisted too much, maybe. Um, but then other ones, they actually found them useful and strong and good fighters and stuff, maybe. So they um, got them ready and got them processed and stuff for conversion. So it's like building up like a baseline army enough to take on the human race but then still collecting more and more people as you go along and collecting like we weeding out the the enemies and the weak ones but then also taking in all the people ready for or all the people fit for conversion fit to be cybermen so just building their army up that way um and that could be how these pods came along that, that, that could be how this army came along like all, all the people waiting to be on awakened it could be all the it, it could be the, the the humans they've collected over the years um because again it's in the far far future so we wouldn't know how many millennia or how many decades that this war has been going on um but there's like a whole battlefield in like a ruined battlefield in space just outside of that carrier ship um where there there are dead bits of floating Simon and those ones i feel like those might be mostly older models and stuff which is which would explain why they why they didn't last very long but they're also in outer space so Simon can't really i don't know if it, i mean it, it, i guess it would make some sense that Simon can't really um form like performance space or maybe they maybe it's just where they were left but whatever happened that happened um but yeah i think maybe that could be that could be the army because like seven billion humans 
like enough of them like you know that maybe it's not that that like maybe it's not that they were all killed but more of them were collected for conversion and then the ones that res- resisted too much and the ones that fought back actively they were killed off but then maybe enough of them were actually um you know like and again again like i mean i'm going off like did this being the far far future so it's like you know over time as well like as as more fighters popped out like you know like more 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 of them were actually clocked in for uh conversion and stuff so it, 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 could, it could be like at least what half of that army is it could be what half the army is just humans collected from the human race and converted to be part of the cyber army because i think again with the cybermen that has always been the prime motive that has been their main mo like you know um being the stronger b- 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 being the, the stronger army the stronger kind of species slash race or whatever but also just collecting it just collecting people for upgrades just upgrading everyone just upgrading themselves and upgrading those around them and always believing that they can be better constantly no matter how many upgrades they go through just upgrading everyone so yeah so then that one makes more sense but then obviously they, they, they upgrade each and every race fit for cyber conversion and then they eventually become the 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 the, the 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 much bigger race in the universe so then that kind of ties into as opposed to killing everyone um it also it means the end of everything but the end of everything as they know it that could mean the, 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 that could be at least part of what the master means at the end like everything you think everything you believe is about to change so you know the, the universe as they know it is gonna change, like not through actual, not 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 through predominantly killing, but partial killing, but predominantly like the Cybermen upgrading every other kind of race in the universe to be like them, to be, um, to be cyber races and stuff. But I mean, I mean, I guess that would work because I think it's just like the fl- some of the flesh they take and then the brain as well of the species and the, the, they put it into that metal suit and then they program it and whatever. So it's not like it's it's not like it's not like they would actually have to change the form of the suit to to fit some actual bug-eyed monsters but yeah most of all i am just really looking forward to seeing how all of this stuff with the cyber army goes down and how the stuff with gallifrey goes now i feel like more than anything i feel like the gallifrey stuff could just be a tie-in back to the timeless child but then i feel like if they're really going to bring it in like that then i mean you know maybe the may, 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 maybe gallifrey and the cybermen are connected in some way like it has to be like the I mean the timeless child stuff was gallifrey and the master the cybermen was first hinted at by jack harkness so that me i mean if, if if they would bring him if they would bring him in in the next episode to tie him into that then that would be great and then you know circling back around to the timeless child stuff and gallifrey being destroyed um and the master and stuff like in some kind of third act or something but I don't know, just them bringing it back raises more questions for me than answers as as to how they're going to tie it all up or how they're going to connect it or, like, how it all might interconnect and stuff. And, yeah, again, like I said, I'm glad <laughs> this isn't the actual finale. I'm glad that's not the route they're going with this because this would have been a completely... Ir- a very bad way to end this series and just a completely messy finale. So, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm curious more... more I mean... I'm curious about a lot of stuff, but more, more, more than anything, I'm curious about like how the stuff with Brendan and then the the flashback stuff connects with this stuff, and how if we're gonna see Brendan being a Cyberman or if we're gonna see him connected to Ashhead or something. I, I I don't know how they how they how they're gonna go with that stuff. I mean, well, I mean Ashhead said he killed his kids. I don't I don't know if if Brendan Brendan could be connected to Ashhead. I mean, unless he's like some kind of distant distant descendant of Brendan from like the way way the far far future, which this is the the Cyber Wars take place in, but. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how Brendan's stuff fits into this, but I, I assume by by the next episode we'll see. By the next episode we'll see. But this was still a great episode. I think I think it affected me mostly because I was like, because I was watching the episode under the mindset and under the belief that this is the finale, and I was like, this is a terrible finale. This is this is the messiest finale ever, finale I've ever seen. But looking back now, knowing the truth, this is a great way to introduce us to the finale. This is a great way to actually start us off into it and. This definitely gets me excited to see how it all ends and how it all concludes in next week's episode. Um, but yeah, have I gotten everything done? But yeah, the Masters pop up at the end, I think, was especially fun to see. Like, that, 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 that is a surprise cameo I didn't really see coming. Like, Gallif- Gallifrey showing up on the other side of the boundary alone. I was like, wait, how's that happening? How's this working? And then, like, a, a figure just falls out of the portal, and I was like do I recognize him? Like, is he, like, I think, at first I thought maybe it's Jack. Maybe it's Jack coming to warn the Doctor about the Cybermen, but no, it's the Master coming through from Gallifrey, 
um, warning her that everything's about to change and that she better be prepared and get herself ready and stuff. So I'm, I'm very, very curious to see how the Master can fit into all this or even bring the Doctor into something else besides from the Cybermen or how all of this might connect. But yeah, Gallifrey and the Cybermen, I think I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how those might connect if they even do because I think Gallifrey's appearance has my mind all kind of shifted to one, to, to another side. Like, wait... Does Gallifrey and the do you got to get this Gallifrey and the Cybermen connect? Is it a different thing? Is it routing back to the original Master's hint to the Timeless Channel? That's not like, like what, what's actually going on here. But again, I think it, 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 this overall still works as a great kind of introduction, or even a second part, a second part to, to this finale. Um, so I'm very very curious to see how it all goes down. Um, but yeah, I think this just. I think I think it's like what worries me more is the fact that this feels like a finale where we we might lose some companions like specifically with with the situation Ryan and Ryan and Graham were in at the end there and the Simon actually breaking through that door it makes me extremely worried for them and who we might actually lose so yeah um but we'll see we'll see but that is pretty much all i have for this episode that was a great intro to the finale so i'm looking forward to seeing what the bbc has in store for us next week and seeing how all of this concludes please don't kill anyone off please do not make us lose any companions this season just give us one more season with them uh but we'll see we'll see exactly how stuff goes down but yeah, that was Doctor Who Season 12, Episode 9, titled Ascension of the Cybermen. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment on what you thought of the episode and what you think is coming up next in this season and what you think the season finale is going to be like. And yeah, that's it. So I will see you guys next time.